Yeah. Come back. Yay! Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> live from Paris, Jean-François Porchet. Wow! So cool. So, um, you are the facilitator tonight for yeah. the second time? I facilitate twice. Twice? Okay. Yeah. So, I give the microphone to, to Alessandra. So, yes, so. Here, please, welcome Alexandra with me. <laughs> Alexandra Kovalkova, who traveled from Russia for us, just yeah. for us. That's what we say. Yeah. Alexandra Korolkova. Alexandra Korolkova. Is it good enough? Okay. Alexandra Korolkova with a French accent. You see, it works Great. too. <laughs> So she's a type designer uh, specialized in, uh, I mean, among everything but serial characters. This is your field of expertise. Uh, she also received uh, an award. Oh, sorry. Uh, the Charles Peignot Award, which uh, rings a bell for us, you know, for French people. Uh, and this is by the ATP. We are talking about the ATP. And it celebrates, I think, like the top type designers under 35, which, which also tells us that you're very young. 32? Oh, yes. Yeah, 32. Uh, it's very exclusive price. You know, they don't give it like every year. Uh, they, they give this price maybe every four or five years. Uh, someone else also received the price a long time ago. Someone named Jean-François Porchez. <laughs> I think, yeah. He got the prize, I, the award, I think, 18 years ago. In 1998. <laughs> He's so old. <laughs> at a time where the French soccer team was able to win soccer cups. <laughs> yeah. Not anymore. Not anymore. <laughs> Almost. We're so close. <laughs> and um, so you will discover her work. So we were talking about it. I'm a big fan of Circe, although it's very hard to pronounce, but this is the way I pronounce it. <laughs> uh, and uh, and uh, last year, you know, we had on this stage uh, Nadine Shahin, uh, who is uh, an expert on Arabic characters, and uh, and I would like to. Uh, it's really amazing to see a connection between uh, two languages uh, in terms of shapes, and uh, this is something you achieve very, very, very well with uh, Siri characters. I would like the the way you reproduce all the the moves and the shapes and the emotion between the characters, uh, between Cyrillic and Latin characters. So very exciting to very excited to have you on stage uh, with us tonight. Thank you. So please welcome Alexandra. Yeah, we'll let you start. That's it. Uh, so on the left, you see the <coughs> booklet of Charles Pignot uh, Free with a, mm, with a mistake in my Russian surname. <laughs> and <laughs> on the right, you see the logo of a company where I work for the last seven years. So I'm, well, I'm a type designer. Now I'm an art director of Paratype. It's Russia's largest type foundry. We have uh, two full-time designers and several freelance designers and a great technical staff and so on and so on. Uh, and that's what I've seen in Paris Metro several days ago. And I was really happy to see my Pity Sense typeface. As some people perhaps, uh, well, no, the, the, there are some free typefaces, and not everyone who downloads them knows who's who's the designer and so on. So it, wa it, it was a team of three designers and a huge lot of technical engineers, yeah. and yeah. I think I'll start. And this is next to Jean-François typeface. <laughs> you know that? Yeah, I, I know yeah. that it's a great uh, picture. Th that Parisian is. Uh, was designed for Paris Metro. Yeah, Metro. So, so I, 
I enjoyed it nice almost picture. every sta station. Uh, so I think I'll start with with this, as probably you know these typefaces because they are free. And I was the principal designer of them, and with Peter Sands and Peter Serif, uh, Olga was a great help, and with Peter Mona, Isabella, and our former art director, who pitifully died in 2012, Vladimir Yefimov was supervising this, this project. Uh, so maybe even if you ever used these typefaces, maybe you don't know that they were designed by commission of the Russian government for, for typographic and writing needs of all uh, principal peoples populating Russian Federation. So uh, this is a booklet with several exotic glyphs that we have in this typeface. And well, if we look at Google Maps, we'll see the largest country in the world. It's Russian, and the red star means Moscow, and all, all, all this land is, it's not very huge populated, but it's still populated. And uh, there are quite a lot of small nations which live there, and they use their, sometimes they, they, they so it's not, uh, the, the, these are not only Russians who live in Russia. And by 2002, by the uh, great accounting, there were five million Tatars, one more, more than one and a half million Bashkirs and Chuvashas, and so on and so on and so on. And all these people, I've, I'll show you the pictures of them and their national costumes. And all this. Uh, people learn their native languages at school and sometimes they really use it in, in their everyday life, but they didn't have a one typeface which would cover all their typographic needs because uh, what's, what's really used in Russia? Uh, Russia is, you know, a country of quite a bad typography because the amount of Cyrillic uh, typefaces is, is not as large as, as of Latin, and mostly they are used system typefaces of Windows mostly. And uh, these guys could use either uh, system fonts from Windows, or which were designed by, mm, for example, Americans who uh, were never interested in their languages, or they used uh, typefaces which they designed by themselves, for example, uh, with only Tatar glyphs or with only Chuvash glyphs mm, added to, to Russian. And it was really a need to make something for, for all of them and to cover uh, as much typographic needs as, as possible. So the 80% of the population is Russia, but Russian, but 20% they are different uh, small peoples and there, is, uh, the, there are about 200 languages in Russia, including dead and non-writing, so we had to support all of them. And there are about 70 languages with more than 10,000 native speakers, which is maybe not so few. And from there, mostly from the 19th century to 1930s, there were writing systems invented for, for those peoples who didn't have their own writing. So mostly the, the, those alphabets are based on Cyrillic, but they have some strange glyphs like this. And first we had to decide which glyphs should we design. And we <laughs> happily, it was not me who was talking to linguists, but uh, our linguist t t gave us such sheets with, uh, with, with different letters. 
and our technical department had to analyze all this and decide which glyphs we should design and which we should not. And we uh, th they decided to, to support all this, Windows uh, 1251, and all Russian, and Western Latin, and Central European Latin, and the title languages of Russian regions. Because uh, Russia is a federation which consists of many regions with, mm, with so, so somewhere there are two languages which have to be written on signage and so on. So there are 53 title languages of different regions. And automatically we support some more languages because uh, the glyphs, they share the glyphs uh, with each other. So we uh, support also much countries of the former USSR. Uh, so what was the goal of designing this? Uh, we tried to analyze what, what, what typographic needs do people have if, if they will get some typefaces. So what, what we can guess that they may need books, magazines, newspapers, they will need reading on screen because they may have websites, for example, in their languages. For example, Wikipedia has pages in several minority languages from Russia. And they, uh, they have to make some packaging maybe, especially with small technical information, uh, some word books, some navigation and office needs. So we tried to invent the family of the typefaces which would cover more or less all of that. And what's that typographic background? What are these people used to? So these are really the most popular typefaces in Russia. Uh, so we uh, try to do our best, but non-professional typographers use mostly times and aerial, and professional typographers use charter, preset, and by that time, uh, meta was also very popular. So we needed to go somewhere there. Uh, so for PT Sense, we had official brief eight faces, and we des decided not to make it for, uh, for weights, but we decided to make four basic styles for office, for example, two caption styles for small point sizes, and two narrow styles for economic settings. And all of this was uh, released in TrueType to work perfectly on screen. So these are the very rare pictures of the first sketches of PT Sons. In fact, th 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 these are the only sketches of it because then I went to the computer. So what we got as, as the result, uh, this took about two and a half years because we, we did the normal PT Sense, PT Serif and the Pro version simultaneously. And well, it's two and a half years of work, two, two years of work of two designers and a half of a year of work of another two designers. Uh, of course, we used the interpolation, but most of uh, those typefaces were designed by hand because the regular was the, the, the basic style and uh, designed regular and black and then got bold. And then we used some some features, but we had to adjust the narrow and so on and so on. And for example, caption was completely redrawn. I mean, serif caption. Uh, so this is the full list of languages which all those typefaces support. And this is the character set of the free fonts. Most of these glyphs, uh, I think you will never need, <laughs> but some people do. Uh, and as I said already, uh, it was de decided to, to hint it in true type because 
there are very a lot of old computers in Russia uh, with old monitors of low resolution, so they were carefully hinted by, by hand by five type technologists. It was a great work of them. And also we have a web version. So what, what do we have? It's, uh, perhaps you have seen it, it's a uh, uh, very open humanist sans serif, uh, and I tried to bring as much asymmetry into it as possible, especially in the letter J. Uh, no one sees it, in fact, but I know that's it. And that's th these are two popular uh, sans serifs uh, for Cyrillic free set, which is Frutiger and Meta, and this is Peter Sands on the right, so it's more or less close to them, so it really can be used instead of, maybe instead of them, even. And also the caption style, uh, which you can use for navigation. In fact, I didn't see it yet in navigation, but I tried to test it. Uh, these are real uh, geographic names, and I squeezed it d different ways. And this is the first sketch of Pity Serif. Uh, I designed those glyphs, but our director, Emil, looked at that and said, it's, it's too neutral, it's not interesting at all. You should look at um, contemporary type faces and make something like them. Well, so that okay, so, so that okay. If uh, you don't want uh, a neutral serif, I will try to make a contemporary one. I looked at Scala and, and, and other type faces and I designed this. Uh, so as it's free, it's used quite widely now. You can also see the, the J which also has an asymmetrical middle part. And uh, as it's free and as it's more or less widely used in Russia, I can say that it's uh, probably the most humanist of widely used Russian serifs. So it's not so much humanist, you know. And this is the italic, so it has true italic as well as the sun's and it has a both sense and serif have caption styled. This is serif caption, which is completely different uh, in design. It's the same point size, but it looks much larger, and it's 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 quite simple, and it has italic too. And that's how it looks in test prints. And. That's how it looks in comparison with Charter and Swift, which are also popular for Russian newspapers and magazines and books, and I mean, of, of those uh, which are designed by more or less professional typographers. And also I thought that uh, the PT serif caption may be used in the signage sometimes, and I was really happy to see it last year in the southern Russia, 1,000 kilometers away from Moscow. I was staying in a small loft hotel and I saw the, the, the typeface on the doors and I was also happy. And really, I'm, I'm, I'm really happy about using this in even in bad typography because even, I see s even when I see something like this, I know that those guys could use Arial, for example, which is quite bad in Cyrillic, but they, they decided to use something else. That's great. <laughs> I think it's a, it's a progress already. And this is how it works in small size. It's a small medicine. It works more, more or less well. And it, it's not caption, it's regular style. And this is PT Serif uh, in navigation in Park Kolominsk in Moscow. Uh, they use Serif for, for 
platform for descriptions and they use sense uh, for navigation. Maybe it's also not the best typography, but they, they use it well. And as I have said, we also have a pro version. Uh, that's uh, the, the, the Blex, which we designed to sort of interpolate and to, to get the bold. And it has, it has even ligatures in PT Sense Black. And here are the, the all faces for PT Sense. And there are also 38 styles of PT Serif Pro. And this is the complete list of languages which they, 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 they support. It's too much. And this is the complete character set. And it's not the largest character set I have designed <laughs> in my life. <laughs> so you see that uh, we, we did some, some eight to six to eight master, master styles a year. And there were two girls who, who designed this. Uh, uh, I was 25 and my colleague was 24. And we, we, we were sitting a year and designing that. <laughs> uh, so these are, these are the ligatures. And this is Pitimona. It's a bit less popular. Perhaps I'm not so good at, monos at monospaced typefaces, but it's really monospaced. It has a different one and L and I, and it has the zero. And it has a very, very large uh, star, but a uh, large asterisk, but I don't know. Uh, perhaps I've never seen it yet in use. And well, and what, and uh, that's what I uh, do in my life. Uh, as as now I work uh, as an art director, I. Do not only type design, but I also write letters to other designers, and sometimes I consult other designers. And I used to teach some time, but now I give s small workshops from time to time, and I try to write something. And well, also sometimes I do lettering, mostly for my job, but sometimes for my home. And sometimes I do book design, booklet design, and, 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 and children's book design, but I hope I will not do it in, in a year or two, because it takes too much time from the job. It's not the proper way. And my home also takes a lot of time, and uh, maybe I'll show you several pictures. So what about type? A little bit of theory. Uh, I know that uh, Dave asked for some theory. That's just for you. Uh, so uh, that's what I, I, I try to use when, uh, when, when I design typefaces. Uh, I think that uh, type design, mostly Cyrillic type design, stays on the three whales, which are the theory and logic of the typeface the history and the emotional side, and the practice or technical quality. Uh, what I mean by theory, I mean all of this about the writing instruments and what logic or which typeface does use, which is very important for Cyrillic, because uh, while we know for Latin the natural history of type design goes from broad nib instrument to the pointed instrument, and it it, it, it was more or less smoothly, uh, but for, for Cyrillic is, it, it is a bit dramatic because we had not uh, a seri we had not no serif faces before early 18th century and Peter the Great's reform. We had typefaces like on the left. This is this is printing type and this is writing cursive writing. And after the reform, we had typefaces like this, like the Latin serif, which was really, uh, a really huge change, and it was very difficult for for people. And 
well. And when now we have to to design something uh, earlier, historically earlier than the 18th century, or something based on the broad nib instrument, we have to sort of invent it. So almost every Cyrillic type designer uh, tries to to make his own his own uh, an analysis or pictures or schemes of, of of what of how should you do it. So this is the pointed pen on the right, which is very natural to for Cyrillic, and this is the broad nib pen on the left, which is uh, quite less natural, and we have to make more effort to make uh, to make a humanist Cyrillic look li both like humanist and like Cyrillic, you know. And the emotional side is mostly about the history and about the details, and as well as in Latin, you you should know the history of type to decide, for example, how much. Uh, serifs should be on the C letter and what shape should they have. As well for Cyrillic, you you have to think a lot and to learn history to know, for example, what should be the shape of the terminal, of the lower terminal of letters there. And what about the technical quality and practice? Uh, what's Cyrillic specific? Is that uh, most Cyrillic letters have at least one straight line or curved line. And the space between the straight and the round letter is the most, the most important for Cyrillic. If you have it more or less correct, you are almost done with your spacing. But if you, if you just copy metrics from existing Latin typeface, Sometimes they don't work because uh, the, 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 there are no symmetrical letters in Latin except the X, but it's, I think, uh, the, the, the exclusions. So uh, as for me, when I begin to design a typeface and when I begin my spacing, I usually begin with a line of symmetrical letters to, to be sure that my Cyrillic spacing will work more or less well. And the, the other side of all this is that, for me, uh, the any typeface has its background. It's what you, what you see when you look at a type in text setting, in small point sizes, the intuitive or emotional perception of the whole typeface. Uh, the middle distance is the rational perception. It's what you see in your, for example, font editor or on your test prints. And sort of the close-up is the also the emotional perception, but of the details. Because you never know what size the user will look at your typeface. Now in, in digital, it may be something like that or something like this. So I tried to divide the, mm, the the different characteristics into into those groups. That the background is mostly about the proportions, the spacing, also the horizontal proportions, also the contrast and distribution of black and white. And the main issue is the style of of typeface, which influences on all of this. And when we are thinking ab about uh, the font editor, about our glyphs, we, we should think about the recognition, the consistency, and the technical quality, like matching of, of stroke fix uh, thicknesses and so on. And the details are just the details. And sizing also influences on the proportions and details and contrast, and you have to keep it all in mind, you know. And when I think about the goal, I mm, sort of divide the typefaces into workhorses, fonts with character, and hasty fonts. When you design 
alphabet in two days, use it for just one book, and forget about it. Uh, oh, I'm sorry for pixels. Uh, I took some pictures. Well, uh, um, I, I think that my main workhorse is the APT family, and another one which I tried to design, but it's still not very popular. Uh, is STEM, which was initially designed as a, as a display typeface, uh, almost without any contrast and without any optical compensation. And in, in, in 12 uh, styles. And, and it also has the text version, which suits for text setting. But, uh, well, uh, as, for, as for Russia, uh, we usually have several years from release to, to the time when typeface is more or less widely used, so maybe the time didn't come yet, or maybe I was mistaken and I didn't design a workhorse. But as for me, I use it. And what about fonts of character? I'll show the, 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 the main of them. Uh, this was my graduation project. Uh, uh, I tried to design a Cyrillic Venetian old style, which is the most complicated and the most difficult for, for Cyrillic, because humanist and Cyrillic sometimes don't work good together, and my goal was to prove that they can be together and that I can design something like will wi which will look like an old style and it will have proper Cyrillic. And what that's what I got. It's a piece of a book cover and it's a, a piece of a book and you can see that it's more or less good in, in, in the setting but of course, when I open it now, I see a lot of things which I would do a different way, but um, I'm not ready to redesign it. Uh, this one maybe will be released this year. Uh, I called it Belladonna when I designed it, but uh, it was in 2007, and from that time the name was already taken, so perhaps it will be released by Font Shop, and perhaps it will be named Karina. Uh, that's how it looks in Cyrillic. Uh, th th there are several ways of it, and this is the, 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 the black one, and it, it has ligatures. It's one of, of the several typeface which, uh, typefaces which have Cyrillic ligatures, for example, for example, Aya or SL or what else? Mm. I don't see. And uh, also, you 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 can switch the swashes on. And it was used for as a custom typeface for a magazine, or for two magazines maybe. So this is the regular, this is the bold, and this is black. And if you will go to Typo Berlin next year, perhaps you will have a bag with my typeface. Because the it's, it's on their website. <laughs> so I hope I can tell about this. And, well, I still don't know how it's pronounced in English, so I'll skip this issue. <laughs> uh, because uh, in Russian we, we, we call it by, by the name of, of that mythological person, and uh, we, we usually call it in Russian. Uh, okay, so, so it's, it's the, the typeface with the hugest character set I ever designed. It has some... 2,500 characters or something like that, and I think that most of them are not necessary, and it would be better if I didn't design them. Uh, but, uh, well, we have the 
basic character set, which is uh, mm, something in between uh, geometric and humanist sans serif. And there are different, uh, different stylistic sets with strange characters, with art deco characters, and with swashes, with a lot of swashes, which take maybe half of, of, of the character set. And it was awful to design them. So you can see some, some of, the, of the characters of this typeface. So all the accented characters have all those alternative to, uh, alternatives too, and the swashes. And that's how it looks in, in use. I know several magazines which use it. Uh, it's another one. Uh, I bought a salt for, 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 for my water filter and <laughs> I found it there too. And uh, their, their central children's department store in Moscow, which is perhaps the largest children's uh, department store in, in Russia, uses it for its, uh, for its uh, sign and for its navigation, but they used all the swashes and it looks terrific, so I didn't, I, I will not show you the picture but I can show you the picture of the sign too. And this is what, uh, this is what I'm working now. I hope I'm finishing it. It's the slab version of the typeface. And while in, in thin or light or regular uh, weights, it was more or less, more or less easy, in extra bold, it was not easy at all, and I was uh, I was re redrawing it for four times until I got something that I can look at, because if you if you don't add so so much contrast, you get not not that girly typeface, but you have something like a sportsman in Adidas trousers, but it's not, not what I wanted to have. So I had to add much contrast to it, uh, very much contrast to it, comparing to, to, to the sans serif, and what that's what I have now. And it was especially funny when I tried to design the alternatives, because we, we have a set of alternative leaves in, in the sense, and uh, we designed to to decided to make as much of them as possible in the slab, except the swash variations. And wha while this was more or less easy, and uh, this was more or less easy, so you had to uh, think about this one. And this was more or less easy, but here I have never seen such a letter before. And I was laughing very, very, very loud when I was designing it, but I hope it will work. Uh, the other thing that I'm doing is theory, type theory, teaching, and so on and so on. And this is a book. Uh, beautifully, it's only in Russian, but happily you don't need it so much because it's not on type design, but on typography. It's a typography learning book for beginners, for maybe students of high schools or beginning type, beginning not type designers, beginning graphic designers, which want to learn something about something about type. It's called Leaf Typography, if we translate the name, and it looks like this. Uh, these are my comments. I um, I read it this year and. I decided that by the next edition, it, it, it was issued for four times already, and about uh, 8,000 copies was sold, but by now uh, all, all of them are sold, and we have to, to make new edition, and I uh, have to, to rewrite some chapters, and that's what I wrote for, for, for myself. 
So it's something about the history, the technological history, the parts of the letters. Uh, you can see my graduation typeface here, and it's, it's set in it, in fact. And this is about the different widths and weights, and, and this is about the a little bit about typography and book design and about size of, of, of paper. And this is a small booklet which I designed uh, probably last year for my workshop at, uh, at, at no, two years ago for a typei. Uh, and it's a small booklet with some pictures about designing Cyrillic, about writing Cyrillic. And I hope to write a more or less normal book with English text, but I don't know when will it be finished or even when it will be normally started. I wrote some three pages and, and that's all by now. Uh, also, I'm not Martina Flor, <laughs> pitifully, but sometimes I also design lettering, uh, for example, the inscription for for our company, which is used on, on the booklet and which is used in the interior. And also some, some just some Cyrillic lettering. And the most funny thing about Cyrillic lettering is that sometimes uh, the customers need uh, to have both, both versions, Latin and Cyrillic, and you have to make it as close as possible. Uh, here I was very lucky because they share a lot of letters but there are a bit of a bit of different length, but it it works okay. And this is just for personal use. Uh, it means uh, it was a citation from from a poster I've seen somewhere that I have to do so much that I'll better go to sleep. And this is a lettering for a book cover for a children's book, for example. And these are some, uh, some hand, handmade letterings for my home. So sometimes I do something just, just for myself. And it's, it's the IKEA clock, which was sort of customized. <laughs> Here is the small cases for different pens or pencils or brushes or something like that. And sometimes I do book design, uh, very rarely, but it, it, it was my uh, sort of recent project a year ago, uh, and I will never do something like that. Uh, the, uh, the size of the books is like, like that. And uh, all of them have uh, 300 pages of, of, different, of different materials. Uh, it's a collection of the best, uh, uh, best um, tales and poems and, s and pictures and so on from the oldest Russian children's magazine, which, is, uh, which was started in uh, 1924, and it's still it still exists, so it looks awful now. But, but in 50s or 60s or 70s, it was wonderful, and it was a great pleasure to, to do it. Uh, first two books, maybe. And the last three, <laughs> it was not so great pleasure. So you can see a typeface here, which, which yet doesn't exist. It, it exists only in, in Cyrillic. <laughs> and here you can see a typeface which was uh, released by Paratype, but it's a two-day typeface when you design in two days, and uh, it was, it, uh, and, it, it, and it is released in, in a month because of different checks and, and technical stuff. And this is also quite a quick typeface of of last year, uh, it is uh, sort of writing with a pointed instrument, which has a lot of alternatives, and uh, I I wrote all the shapes. And our second full-time designer, Alexander too, Alexander, 
uh, he made the spacing and the open type features and this is so and so on and so on. So it has also quite a lot of glyphs. And that's about it's it, uh, the last part. Uh, it's what takes also a lot of of my time. Um, my husband and me we designed our house. Uh, we we consulted with an architect, of course, but we designed uh, the plan and we designed the facades, and then we went to a constructor who made a project for the builders, and, and that's. It's copied from Eric Speakerman. <laughs> <laughs> so that's just it. And that's me putting the books. And it's my it's my daughter and it's the snow queen made of real snow. So that's all. Thank you. Thank you, Alexandra. So, if you have uh, any question for Alexandra, hmm? yes. <coughs> okay. The question about the history of PT sense. I'll just uh, repeat for the stream. Okay. Um, uh, they, 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 they should be free from the very beginning, so they, they, they were commissioned to be free. And first we released them with our own license, based on SIL license, but written in Russian uh, as it was commissioned by government and so on and so on. And it, it should have a license in, in, in Russian. But after that, uh, the Linux users were writing to us a lot and telling that, well, you have a free typeface, but it's not not totally free. We can't use it in Linux. Please do something and release it also with OFL. So it's 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 completely free. Uh, well, except that perhaps it's better to change the name if you change something in it. So how do you avoid being overwhelmed? Like so, like big character sets, I guess? That's the, the point. I hate big character sets, you know. <laughs> ah. And uh, well, uh, as for now, uh, I think that, I don't know, 500 glyphs, maybe 600 glyphs is enough. <laughs> but, but if you have to have extended language support, you have to do nothing mm. but design all, all the glyphs needed. Happily, it's not. It's it's difficult only for some twenty of them, and the other ones are more or less easy. Any question, Sir Francois? No. It's a hand somewhere. The chino on the back. Yes, I recently learned that there is like a limitation of the number of uh, kerning pairs that you can do in a font. So how do you do when you have like 2,000 characters, then you do like big classes, or how do you do for kerning all these uh, characters between all of them? All the combinations can be astronomical. Oh, I'm afraid I can't answer properly because I don't do classes. Uh, it, it's made by by technical engineers. So I just designed the, the, the glyphs and I say that I want to put this, 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 this into one set and they do the magic. Okay. I'm sorry. Uh, as you pointed the difference between the, 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 or the difference between Cyrillic and Latin, and especially with the humanistic or old style. And, and, y and you s it seems for me, I can't read Cyrillic. I don't speak Russian. It seems for, for me that you it was a, uh, a way 
in the Cyrillic uh, system to uh, try to some imitation of the Latin humanistic old style way. And I was thinking, was wondering uh, in, uh, in literature, in translation, in, uh <coughs> in France we have a great translator from Russian. I don't know if you know this name, his name is Andrei Markovics, and he has translated Dostoevsky from Russian to French. And he has pointed out also the thing that what is a mistake in French is the repetition of a word. And in Russian, it's not. And so, as we, in the old time, we translated Dostoevsky, for example, with some correction, just in order that it appears uh, clear for the French good style. And he do exactly the inversion. So he tried to put some Russian stuff or Russian music in French mm -hmm. language. So it was the inversion for, uh, I think th that uh, the way this translator is, is going to, to put some Russian in Latin, and I think uh, what you have said, it's put some humanistic and in uh, West European to uh, Russian. Uh, have you, have you th thought about that? Have you discussed with uh, uh, with writers uh, about uh, this cur these two languages, their differences, uh, the way that like Russian is very straight and no italics, no, no not so much. And in, in the Latin way, in European, there are le a lot of round uh, figures and so on. I, d I d was just wondering, it's not a real question. <laughs> so thank uh, you. <laughs> As usual. <laughs> As usual. Thank you. Uh, well, I, I, I can try to answer, but it may be, um, it may also take quite a lot of time. Uh, uh, you know, uh, when you sort of translate a typeface, uh, you may just, of course, you may just follow the details of the, 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 the initial font and bring them to, to Cyrillic and get a result. But uh, as, as for me, what, what, what I try to do is to make more or less some structure and more or less some pattern and more or less some character. But it's, it's not so easy and there are some typefaces where you can do it and there are some faces where it's quite difficult to do it. I can try to, to open another PDF. Uh, which one? I have this. I'll, 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 I'll find a page and then, then show it. That's it. Uh, maybe it's an illustration. Uh, this is a serif and this is a crossbar mm -hmm. in Latin. And you see that if we have sort of symmetrical serifs in Latin and sort of just straight crossbars and if the typeface is humanistic, because it is centered by Bruce Rogers, we will have great troubles designing Cyrillic because we have, if we copy it, we'll, ha we'll get completely different pattern. And what, what I do suppose for, for designing both Latin and Cyrillic, when you're designing something humanist, uh, you should bring as much asymmetry as possible on the latent stage. Because if you have some asymmetrical serifs or asymmetrical crossbars or asymmetry everywhere you want, and you, you then you can make some, some lively structure in Cyrillic which will be not so straight, straight and straight. And I have an experimental typeface. I'm not sure that I have a picture of it, I can try. Not the mouse. It's not here. It's no mouse. Up, up. Here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. 
I lost it. Sorry, I've lost the mouse. Uh, <laughs> so I can't show you the picture. Uh, but, uh, oh, wow, thank you. Mm, where is any picture or this typeface? Yes, That's it. Okay. Uh huh. That's it. Okay. It's coming. It's coming. Yeah, ah, it's really coming. Ah. It has only one style yet, and it's not finished. It was, in fact, it was designed six years ago. Uh, it has no straight lines at all. All of these lines hmm. are curved. They are not straight. And in this case, it works mo as more or less humanist in, in, in the Cyrillic setting. Uh, but but you have really to 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 to, to take much effort to, to do something uh, because uh, designing of an 18th century typeface is very easy for Cyrillic, but designing of a 16th century typeface is rather difficult. But well, I think it's it's still possible. So uh, it's it's really very much like literally translation, because uh, as for Russian, for example, we have three different translations of Alice in Wonderland, and no one can say which is better and which is worse because they they uh, use differently, completely different approaches. How to translate the poems and how to translate the text and how to translate the the, the, the words and, and so on. Uh, uh don't don't move the image. I have a, a question. Or oh, you translate? Or oh, you are able to work since many years with this stuff to say that it's I don't know. <laughs> you know, uh, I in Latin you have A B C on A B C uh, that, but here you have. Uh, wh when when A F I can type y I can y type y Rush Russian in this window and it will and it will be okay. It's yeah, just the, the seventy five. Where is the seventy five? The yeah, 75 is, 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 what is 75? Where is my mouse? Yeah, oh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, this is which number, which Perhaps years old? Yes, you don't, don't know? I, I, I don't know the, nu the number of it. It's, well. Uh, oh, you found the mouse, thank you. Uh, where is the mouse? Uh, no, it's, it's 80 something. <laughs> and Michael 75 is something mouse like, facilitators like of the of the uh -huh. of the year. 75 is this. But of course we we, we never we, we, we never call it okay. a, a FII 75. I can just just print in this window and Ah, and yes. it will be okay. We are not able to do that wi without a Cyrillic keyboard in, Euro in, in Europe, Occidental Europe. We are not able to key that. We, we need a Cyrillic keyboard to be able to key greatly. So we know only the yeah. these, um, fucking list you, you display before. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry no, no, for that. No, no, you are not sorry. It's yeah, you know your friend at Font Lab. I, I have to do something when I try to design Greek. I have just to to pick the letter and to put it in, in into the line and to see the yeah. s the spacing and so on. So it's it's a common issue. Which keyboard do you have? Only one. Yes, I, I was wondering for this massive character set that you've designed for Chuvashi, Bashkir, Tatar, and mm -hmm. that. Have you seen examples of PT Sans yeah. used by those people? Because, I, I mean, that, that's probably very gratifying to actually see. Uh, 
I have seen and where where do you put the mouse? Ah, oh, <laughs> yeah, I found it by myself. Great. Uh, I'll try to to find it. Uh -huh. Maybe it's here and maybe not. I'm sorry. Um, no, it's not here. It's maybe here in years. And mm. I have a Kazakh text. I, I'm sorry. I'll I'll put it into the the preview or something like that. This is Kazakh. It's not Chuvasho Bashkir, but it's more or less more or less okay. And I had a, a picture of of a keyboard. Uh, but I think it's somewhere far away. But uh, I also have seen some books in Yakut which use Peter Serif, children's books with, with fairy tales. So it, it works. Do you, do you think it's taking some time before people get familiar with Piti Sans in those remote areas of Russia? And then at some point they will start using this font more? And or it's, uh, I, I don't know, is, is it the project for the future? Because I mean, I'm Russian, so I can't, I mean, I, it's like, I feel like those people, do they even use, do they even know what the, what a font is? Like they, they know. <laughs> uh, we we discussed the uh, the, the the design of the glyphs with some experts there somewhere in Siberia or the the the, the, the north or somewhere else and uh, some language institutions are very aware of these typefaces and they really use it for their language courses or for children's book or books or for learning books to do it Maybe not in all regions, but somewhere it's really used. Pleasantly surprised, really. <laughs> and I guess also because uh, PT Sense was uh, commissioned by the, the state. Uh, I guess it was pushed also by all state organizations in uh, each uh, region. Uh, in fact, in fact, no. It was commissioned by the, um, the ministry, the, the minister of print and mass communication. But mm -hmm. in fact, it was uh, Emil who, oh. who 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 made it to be commissioned. He Emil, Emil Yakupov, uh, our director, who beautifully died two two years ago. He just was coming to them and telling that yeah, all exists. these peoples lack their own typeface. You should commission the typeface for them. And he made some presentations and he, hmm. he, he did everything. And in maybe two years, he made them commission that. Wow. It was great. Kay. So it was, uh, it was sort of our initiative, uh, so the government doesn't uh, spread it by its own will, but, well, they, they supported it, and it's already good, I think. That's great. Jean-François? A stupid question. Uh, who is the most easier to draw, the Cyrillic or the Latin? Uh, the same. It's 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 more or less the same as for me. But uh, I know that quite a lot of Cyrillic designers say that Latin is easier for them. Mm. But uh, well, it's it's another issue of I don't know maybe of ideology, because um, much Cyrillic graphic designers 
say that no, Cyrillic is not beautiful at all. It's awful. We prefer Latin. We like Latin. Latin so is so beautiful. You know, Latin is really beautiful, but it doesn't mean that you shouldn't use Cyrillic when you live in Cyrillic writing country. And as for me, I decided some years ago that in that case when I can choose if I will use Latin or if I use will use Cyrillic, that I will choose Cyrillic just to 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 have more skills in it. And I think that Cyrillic is not that ugly, but it has a lack of practice. Because if if the designers don't want to use it or don't want to design it, uh, it will be a less good Cyrillic than it could be. So uh, I think it's just a subject of maybe time. Because now it's much better than it was 10 years ago, and I think in the next 10 years it will be better than now. And perhaps uh, I will not live that long to see the time when the graphic designers will say that Cyrillic is beautiful, but I think that uh, I should do my best to to <coughs> to make the times happen. Well, join me. Say uh, thank you, thank, thank you, Alexandra. You. And we can say goodbye to our friends on the live stream. Hi. See you next week. Thank you. Bye, Internet. And now we